Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, October 2nd, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Live, the Bear Podcast, Ben Sherman Length, episode number uh, uh, 665. And uh, it's been a while. Time to do this. I was hoping to get a little bit of extra comments about the it's been a while before we actually went into this, but apparently nobody else wanted to talk. But here I am. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, so month of September was great because I, I, I had a vacation that ended ended August. It rolled in September because of Labor Day. Got an extra day and then I went back to work. And then three days of working, I come back home, feel god awful. And so I decided, been like, I feel this is just cold. But just in case. And so I took a COVID test and it came up positive. Dun, dun, dun. So I was essentially sequestered for two weeks. Two weeks. Oh, God. And then I come back to work three days and somehow got the vid. Also, a week, I had found out, hey, my apartment now has access to Google Fiber. So I immediately signed up for Google Fiber. That was fun. And I got Google Fiber. I was Yay. at home. With cool. a bit long. We had masks. Six feet apart. Etc. That's nice. Lasted about a week. And then that fall week Monday finally showed up with the negative test and so i was able to get back to work well i think it was actually in the office yeah in the office and that following thursday the boss man was was in town and and he was going to take us out and said he would buy us a drink and i'm like great i haven't had a kamikaze in a long time so i got a kamikaze and a beer but before that i had already (laughs) uh we we had already uh dismissed our class and so we have plenty of time before we're going to meet up. I decided that, hey, you know what's near where we're going? Which it was BJ's. And then we just, there was like a whole bunch of joking when we were talking about where we want to go. And we're like, how about BJ's? <laughs> and yeah, it was nonstop. So I decided, hey, you know what's near there? Oh, there's the domain. Nice little uh, uh, shopping uh, district. And in there is an Apple store. <gasps> so I decided I just like just on a whim and because I could afford it, I went down to the Apple store and got me a brand spanking new iPhone 14. Mm. I was upgrading from a 10R. Wow. Okay. So mm. okay. nice, nice big jump. Got the same color because I always like getting the product red. Because in addition to being being a nice nice red, it's also product red, which means it gets a little bit of uh, good feelings. Because I think it originally supported like AIDS in Africa or something like that. 
needs research from Africa or something. I don't know what mm. they're doing right now. But all I know, it's important. Product red phone. So I got a phone. Did a little transfer. It was a little late, but I got my kamikaze and my beer. And my uh, boneless wings. I wasn't that hungry. Nice. I mean, and then it was just the uh, same old, same old and uh, headaches from... I just want to say baby gays nowadays are just so disappointing. Especially when it comes to worth that ethics. That's all I'm going to say about that. Mm. Oh, actually, it's tea. Anyway. Oh, wait. Wrong one. Hold on. That. There we go. I like that one. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Just disappointed. Just disappointed. <laughs> Should I spell gay J A G Y? Because why not? Because that's what's going in the test. Sure. Yeah, test. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, so that was pretty much my September. Uh, I at least got, I, and and you got to know that uh, one of the shows this past month, I still did the intro. For the audio podcast. I have to say, it was kind of a sexy voice. Oh. <sighs> Did you have a deep, gravelly voice? <laughs> there is there a thing about, about being sick. Sometimes yeah. your voice gets a little more lower registry. <laughs> mm. I'm not I sound. Oh, no. I'm so congested. <laughs> Oh, in this episode, oh. but it was it like in this episode ever comes out loud? <laughs> that was it. Wasn't like that. It was just more. Thank heaven for that. Yeah. I did not hire anybody. If anybody was wondering, I know I do that for for SeaWorld Drag Race, but for for the previous episodes, no, I was just sick under under the weathers. Mm -hmm. Well. And I don't normally get sick. I was pissed. Anyways, moving on. D D Damon, how about you? Um, cool. So September was quite a bit of a busy month, and there was a lot of traveling going on. Um, literally right in the near the end of the month. So I went to Columbus for an Onyx event. Um. Got to spend time with my brothers and Onyx there and um, went to a bar. It was a different event than what we usually do. It's normally our bar night and we like sell raffle tickets and do jello shots and, and you know, work the door and all this stuff. And sometimes we're doing other things. This one was more of an invasion. So I got to just chill and enjoy the scenery. And... Um, there was a lot of good scenery. I will just I'll put it like that because it was a it was a superheroes and villains kind of themed um, costumey night, and uh, so there was a lot of like you know spandex and superhero like leather type things going on, and um, yeah, it was it was it was a great time, and and I got to see a lot of good people, and that was fun. And then to kind of keep into the theme almost, um, I traveled, well, Jim and I both traveled to um, Orlando for World Bear Weekend. Now, I won't say too much because we have a podcast coming out here soon, knock on wood. Uh, but uh, uh, World Bear Weekend was a, an experience. Um, congratulations to our new World Bear title holders. There's Buddha Onyx, who is World Bear. There's Daddy Danger, who is Wor Ms. World Bear. And then, so there is, sorry, Buddha Onyx is Mr. World Bear. Uh, Daddy Danger is Ms. World Bear. And Panda. S? Yes, MS. MS. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ms. or Ms. And then Panda is World Cub. So, to really quickly, there's a, the only reason I'm giving the distinction is because the Mr. World Bear and the Ms. World Bear are gender specific. Mm -hmm. World Cub and World Pet are not. And they did not have a World Pet um, 
contestant this year, which was unfortunate, but um, there should be more some uh, next year for sure. Uh, Those pets need to get out there. Yeah, they will. And uh, Mr. or sorry, World Cub Panda is a previous guest of Cubs Out Loud. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah. So uh, there's that. And um, Orlando was, uh, it was hot. And um, mm. we'll get into it in the podcast, but there was a lot of walking. And um, we got home before the hurricane. So there's all of that going on. Um, okay, so so quick question. Have you waved yourself? Did you wave yourself before and after? No. Okay. Because you should wave but I'm yourself sure, like, just to I be am, like, hey, I lost two yeah. pounds. I am fairly certain, um, judging by the still pain in my um, ankles and um Achilles tendon, um, I did a good amount of walking and I'm sure I lost some weight because it was hot as well. Um, and I did not eat as much. While there was a lot of food going on, there was not, I did not eat as much. It's one of the weird things that happens for me at the bear events. Um, anyway, so having said all that, uh, um, in addition, and I'll kind of throw this out there. Um, someone got into a little something while they were at World Bear Weekend. And by someone, I mean me. Um, mm. I did my first ever modeling gig slash fantasy role play stuff. Um, so... Um, for those who don't know, there's a site called Wolfbound, W-O-F-B-O-U-N-D, um, Wolfbound. Um, it's uh, run by um, Slade Travis from Chicago, and he goes around to events and has people in Chicago that he, and bas he basically, you know, you know, ties them up and he has role play fantasy scenes on his site, but he also just ties people up and then kind of fucks around with them. Um, and that's what happened with me. I mean, I'm just, I'm going to general, I'm generalizing it, but uh, uh, I did that for, for him and his site. Um, and uh, you can see a preview of the pictures on my Twitter and you can see a preview of the scene on um, Wolfbound, the Wolfbound Twitter. Um, I will probably link that uh, real quick, but um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. Just happens uh, to was... follow Wolfbound. Yeah, yeah, and um, I got that was my first time ever being tied up. Yeah, yeah, that was my first time ever being tied up. Um, I trusted Slade a lot. Um, I've known him for years, and. We've talked about this so many times about doing it, and it just happened. To... <laughs> I'll try to make the. Um, I had just. I was just in his. He did a class on role play. Jim and I both went, and um, the class was over, and everyone left, and we're just kind of sitting there talking. He and his um, um, class, like he had a partner for the class, and. Um, we're just sort of talking and uh, everyone else has left. And, and he's like, so he kind of like turns and goes, so, and he grabs his bag and I know his bag cause I've seen it so many times and I know that there's rope in there and that's his like travel, like I'm going to go um, tie someone up bag. <laughs> and so he's like, do you want to do this now? And I'm kind of like, sure. And I'm immediately like, I have to like, process because we just shifted from this role play class to the, this and i'm like okay well we're in a we're in a room we're technically by ourselves um no one has a room for the rest of the night um but uh there is i was noticing next door is the um pet social <laughs> that I had kind of also wanted to go to. I was kind of like, well, I guess I'll do this now and then head over there for a little bit. And that's kind of what happened. So um, 
And for those wondering, yes, Jim was there. Um, um, Jim got to see it all happen. Um, and I was kind of glad that he was there because it kind of made it um, intimate's not the word I'm looking for, but I think that's the word I'm going to stick to. It was just, it was, it was fun and um, I enjoyed it. And um, would I do it again? Um, yeah, I think I will. Um, so uh, uh, I don't know if Slate will be listening to this or not, but um, I will probably be up to doing more um, next time which will probably be NAB. So, hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that's that's me in a nutshell. Um, I'm sure Gary will talk about stuff, but um, I did get to spend, um, Gary and I did record um, a, a show, an on-the-road show, um, and there's all of that going on. And oh, flashback. Have, I haven't had right. those in a while. Right. So there's all of that going on. Um, but other than that, it was it was a good weekend. It was a good time, and I I I, and I enjoyed myself. I'll put it like that. So September was kind of fun, kind of. There, yep. There's other things that happened, but I won't get into that right now. I have to say, I'm I'm partially jealous about the you wolf bound thing. Mm. A little. Yes. I, I'm just too antisocial to go to an event where where I could run into that. Mm -hmm. so well, I actually, I ended up having that. You know, I'm sure if you were to connect with with Slade or Wolfbound, like contact Wolfbound themselves, if he happens to be in your area, I'm sure he would be happy to set up something and tie you to fuck down. Like, I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm, he, he is all like, the thing I love the most about Wolfbound and Slave in, in particular is he is all about like body empowerment and, 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 um, uh, he knows like guys will like, you know, the types like the bears. Yeah. Ask what, and also it's, it feels like it's like, what do you want to take mm -hmm. the scene, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's ready to and, accommodate the participants. And he's, and he's fun, and he knows. Um, uh, uh, yeah, just look at the video. I will say that much. Like, the video of me, he 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 found something that is a... Um, hmm. Normally is a negative for me and will immediately take me out of any play that I am in, involved in. But he was it, because I was bound and gagged, um, not fully gagged. Like you could, I could still make sounds. But mm -hmm. um, he was able to um, play with that, and he played with it to my comfort level, which kind, made kind it even like more the, fun. Kind of like the poked, you know, but didn't like go too yeah. far. Just like right. like a little something that you're not so fond of. Right, and not going too far. Yeah, he knew how to. I again, and I trusted him. Mm -hmm. uh, but he knew how to push that limit without going one to a hundred. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, and but that's it. That's it. I'm I'm trying to get to find the see if I can find the site. Yeah, I mean, picture. if you want the link to the tweet, the preview <laughs> video, I got it. I've okay. also favorited it and retweeted it. <laughs> I thought about just like adding that to my uh tweet for later, but yeah, uh, I then went, went no, nah, I'm not sure how appropriate, so I'm just leaving it there. Well, that's it, that's me. Um, Gary, after all that conversation, Gary, yeah, um, well, I spent half of September not working. So that was nice. Mm -hmm. uh, part of it was the planned vacation, but then I was looking at just about the September overall, and I was like, yeah, I basically only worked two weeks out of four. So that was nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so not working. 
for a while of going back to work has been an adjustment issue because I really did need the time off and the time away. Mm-hmm. Um, that said, uh, I was back for a couple of days. I go back tomorrow. My head is just not in it. Mm. I don't know where my head. I don't know where my head is. Like, but I'm there, but I'm kind of not there. And I think part of it was because I knew I only had a couple of days, and then I was going to be off for the weekend. So now I've got the whole month of October, and I'll take any time off again until mid-November. So, uh, yeah, I've got like a good solid six weeks to you know get some stuff done. Get so, back into it, girl. Do it. Yeah. Um, and uh, she got me, gal. Mm-hmm. What? David knows what that's about. Right. So, uh, left on Saturday the 17th for lovely Florida. Um, (laughs) Had a great uh, first half of the vacation. And uh, Wednesday, halfway through the vacation-ish, met up with AJ and Zach and Kelly um, Drew and I had joined them at the Polite Pig in Disney Springs, which used to be downtown Disney. <clears throat> That's a very commercial kind of retail area. We This was a part of the schedule that had been planned. I knew that they were going to be busy with judging and, you know, possibly volunteering over the weekend for the run. And so um, I wanted to be able to, like, meet them and kind of just, you know, uh, share some time together, that kind of stuff. So we had a good dinner. Um, but I noticed, like, when we were walking around, I was like, I'm feeling kind of tired. And, you know, granted, we had done the parks at the beginning of the week, but I was just like, man. So we got back to the hotel that we were staying at, and it was our last night, and then we were switching to the host hotel for the run the next day on Thursday. So I decided to take a COVID test. Uh-oh. And she came back positive. Mm-mm. So now I am trying to figure out what to do because I'm on vacation in another state far, far away from home. I also have two roommates that are sharing space with me who have one has been with me almost nonstop since arrival. We have been in car, you know, driving together many times, done excursions together, been in spaces together. The other one is sharing the space with us, um, has done a couple of things, but not very much with us. They've gone and done some other things. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to figure out what to do about that. Plus, I'm about to go to a run. Mm-hmm. So uh, you'll hear more about that in the On the Road show. <clears throat> <laughs> if you happen to be watching the video, uh, the backdrop is actually the suite at the host hotel. I got very well acquainted with because <laughs> I stayed in it pretty much uh, 90, 95% of the time. It didn't go yeah. anywhere. Mm-hmm. Didn't do much of anything or see anybody. I get get to see Damon. Um, we did record a podcast, socially mm-hmm. distanced. So if you're looking at the video, you'll <laughs> see that there's this wonderful like wooden like thing behind the couch and behind like the table there. It's a divider, and it divided the rooms. Um, and so we are literally sitting across from each other through this divider. With him in one room and me in another. Yeah. It'll make more sense when you watch and listen to the show. But yes, so uh, we did a socially distance on the road show at a bear run where Damon got to talk about the run that I didn't go to. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to Adam yet? about? I have not. Um, I have mixed feelings about that. Okay. Because... (laughs) There's a part of me that, like, I don't know. I, I, I'm I very mixed about it. I don't want to talk about it on air too much. Um, then leave it at that. Well, because here's the reality. Being a person who's put on events for a very long time, I understand. You have pre-commitment costs. You've already spent the money for this stuff. So I don't expect to get a refund. Mm-hmm. And yet, when I looked at the dollar amount of money that I spent in total, that's the part that is peeving me. Because I didn't get anything. But that was also partially my choice. Mm -hmm. Several people had talked to me about, like, going down and checking in for the run and, you know, getting my swag and trying to do some things. And in the end, I chose not to do that just because technically I was supposed to be isolated. Like, in in technicality, Drew and I were not supposed to be sharing any space together. Mm -hmm. And we kind of briefly talked about that, like, 
one person taking the bed and the other person taking the couch in the in the living room section. Mm. Um, but we didn't choose to do that. Um, he decided for himself to share space, but I wore an N95 mask for like four days, almost nonstop, 24 hours a day. Well, right. kind of, except for when I had my CPAP on. And even then, I did a ridiculous thing where I put a mask over top of the CPAP mask. Anyways, it's a long story. <laughs> that said, so far, the lesson yeah. learned here, kids, is I'm the only one that had it. Mm-hmm. So Drew never got it. Mm-hmm. Chester never got it. Damon mm-hmm. didn't get it. Nope. AJ, Kelly, and Zach didn't get it. Mm-hmm. I was freaked out because we had dinner together and I was sitting directly across from them. Mm-hmm. But we were in an open public airspace, quote unquote, I mean, with high ceilings. So yeah. uh, it was a limited, I mean, granted, it was a dinner and stuff. And I did meet them, um, gave AJ a hug, handshake with Zach, waved at Kelly. That was, you had to be there to understand how we met. <laughs> uh, we finally saw each other for the first time. But no, so there was a, there was a lot of things. Um, so ultimately, in the end, masks work. You follow the, the the guidance for mitigation measures, and they work. Unlike Jeff, I am still coming up positive on my COVID tests. Oh, no. Wow. How long has it been? Uh, for me, days, about... 12 days? Let's see. Probably about 10 days was about mine, so... Oh, and before I forget, while we were in Orlando... God bless Drew. I really owe him. He is my bestie, you know, sister from another mother for a reason. We spent most of Thursday morning driving all over God bless it, Orlando greater area because I like on Wednesday I started, you know, I was tired and I was like, I just have this gut feeling suspicion. And I started feeling a little flush, but I was like, Meh, it's, <laughs> it's Orlando and it's hot out, but we're granted in the hotel room where it's air conditioned. So when the test came back positive, I was like, motherfuck. So I promptly borrowed the rental keys, went to a local Publix with a ridiculous kind of attempt to mask myself. Cause I didn't actually have any masks with me at all for this mm-hmm. trip. They were in my car in the long-term parking lot of the airport back Mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania. Yeah, smart move on my part. So I had to buy some masks, bought a a thermometer, bought – what else did I buy? Something else. I can't remember. Medicine or something. And then, like, took my temperature. It was a little elevated. I was like, god damn it. So anyways, uh, Thursday morning – well, Wednesday night, I made an appointment to go get uh, what's called the test and treat. So there's thousands of locations across the continental U.S. You can go get tested, and if you come up positive for your test, they can write you a prescription right then and there for Paxlovid as the treatment plan. If you qualify for it, you might have a medical condition that doesn't. Um, there's a, two versions of Paxlovid and strength that you can take depending on your medical physical history. And then there's also, um, if need be, you could potentially go get an IV um, uh drug infusion, which was one of the first things that came out in the early part of the pandemic before the uh, oral tablets did. So anyways, we went to the first location. They had no record of me. No, 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 that wasn't it. We were late. And because mm-hmm. we were late, they automatically canceled it. They wouldn't even like see me. It was an automated system thing. So then I quickly made a second reservation and we left and we had to drive somewhere else in Orlando, a half hour away to get to that one. God bless it. And then we showed up there and they said that I didn't have that appointment anymore the system had no record of it i didn't get a confirmation email even though i had a screenshot on my phone so that didn't work so then i had to make a third one we left for the third one that was at a different location over a half hour away we get there and they're saying i don't have a a, an appointment reservation confirmed there but i do at the exact same time back at the second location but i can't make it in Like, this isn't transporter technology. I can't be there in an instant. It's going to take me another almost 40 minutes to have Drew drive me all the way there. So the the nurse was very polite and squeezed me in Mm -hmm. at the third location. Um, And then they gave me the script. So I got the Paxlovid, and I did that for five days. Mm -hmm. Um, Had a side effect I was not a fan of, but dealt with it. And so it, it, it tremendously helped. It knocked me from having, like... I don't know how many really shitty days of like, you know, feeling horrible to about a day and a half. So yeah, from Thursday through Friday, like was probably the worst of it. Um, Mm -hmm. 
and it's been better, but I get easily fatigued. I'm not a fan of that. Um, and I have to wear a mask when I'm around people because I'm still coming up positive at the moment. So oh. there's potential that I'm still shedding the virus. Yay. Yay. So. Da, 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 da. But. So the, the one thing that I keep seeing from a lot of people and I feel you on social media is I spent two and a half years avoiding this. Two, two years, three quarter, two and three quarters of a year, whatever it is, like avoiding it. And in the end, it got me. And I know I have a, I know within myself, no matter what, emphatically, I know exactly when it happened. And it was mm. the plane ride down. And it might very well have been the four year old next to me that was screaming and yelling and carrying on and was miserable. Mm. Supposedly because their ears wouldn't like repressurize. Wow. Mm -hmm. but there's quite a possibility that they were the vector. They were the index that were spreading it around. So yay. Wow. Neat. Yeah. So yeah. So I get to so, go back to work this week. So I went to work last week. I took his extra sick day. If I take three sick days, I have to have a medical qualification to, to not be there. Right. So I took one day as a sick day to extend my vacation. And I basically spent it not doing anything and relaxing and um, resting. So then I went back to work Thursday, Friday. I go back to work tomorrow. And this week, the state comes and does their in-site visit. Oh, no. Yeah. So, and the reports and everything had to be done before I left. So anyways, I'm like, this will be fun. So I get to find out. Yeah. So I get to oh. test on Tuesday. And I'm going to retest again Thursday morning before I go to work and see if I still come out positive. Um, so that'll be fun mm -hmm. to uh, be around the staff you know from the state and be like hi oh this yeah the mask yeah i'm still wearing it because i'm apparently yeah. still infectious and shedding virus hi how, how are you <laughs> carry a thing of 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 hand sanitizer Just, yeah yeah anyway so and the, so the one the only thing that i have left over is the fatigue issue that i gonna get tired easily and I have this sinus infection thing that is just not going away. Mm -hmm. So every once in a while I cough. And part of it is because I've got this like sort of congestion, sort of drainage thing that mm -hmm. is just not quitting. Yeah. So I'm annoyed by that. Anyways. Understandable. So yeah. for everyone's information, we have all had COVID now. Ooh. I was thinking of that. David was first, and then Jeff and I both got it within about a month. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea of how I got it. Well, besides the fact uh, that, <clears throat> that I went back to work and then I got it. I was just going to say, Jeff, it has to be work unless you were, like, going to orgies or something no. or, nope. you know. No. We know that. <laughs> we know Jeff has been, like, <laughs> he's pretty much been home and working, and that's been. That's pretty much it. Yeah. So Stop at a grocery right. store maybe, but that's about it. I mean, and that could be that's the only other factor that maybe could be it, but I doubt. But anyway. No. And I hear you chuck about wearing masks pretty much in public all the time. Like Yeah. Like and and so I'm used to wearing a K N ninety five and N ninety five is much better at filtration, obviously. It's much more effective. It also fits your face tighter, and you basically are constantly rebreathing your own exhalation. That gets mm. old. Oh, yeah. A while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just for the record. So. I, I tried yeah. a, a... I got some from my doctor's office, the, the N95 mask, and I, like, I just had them. And I tried them one day for like five minutes, and I was like, I can't. This is this is too much. This I can't. Uh, so I I switched back to I was doing my cloth mask for a long time, and I went to my doctor's office back in I think October last year, and they were do they were um, they were doing the ox like the uh, pulse oximeter. And my, they kept getting a weird, like, low number. And they're like, maybe because of your mask. And I was like, well, I, that seems odd. 
but they're like, oh, well, we don't use those. We, you know, they have said that they don't, you shouldn't use those anymore for COVID and what have you. You should probably now start using the KN95s or the, K, the K95s or N95s. So I have a bunch of those, and those are ones that I kind of have tucked everywhere. Like there's some in my work bag, there's some in my chorus bag, there's some in my um, 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 gaming bag. Um, if I know I'm going out and about, I might throw one in my bag, in my pocket, um, just to kind of have, um, but it, it doesn't happen as much. And we would, um, yeah, it, uh, it's a thing. It's a big thing. Um, I was a little surprised that, um, there were, I wouldn't say surprised, I wasn't surprised that at the event, at the run, there were not a lot of people masking, but we're also in Florida. And uh, even the staff was not as masked. I think maybe one or, I saw a few here and there, but most everyone else was yeah. kind of fine. Well, like Chuck and Owen, like Chuck mentioned that he also got his from work and Owen said, I think most cases nowadays will be from work because really people just go to work when they shouldn't because they feel like they they don't have any other choice, which is totally fair. You know, we don't have a, a living wage baseline that exists for people. So if it's a choice of making money or not making money and then not paying a bill of some kind, then I can understand why they still go to work, you know. That was where I was like, I feel blessed that I have not only vacation time that I'm away, but I also have like, you know, the sick time if needed to to take more time. But yeah, right on the first night, I was like, OK, so I got to think about like networks for hospitalization or just all sorts of stuff, you know. And um, I do want to thank, you know, folks for checking in during the course of the weekend of the run who knew and were like, you know, how are you doing? How are you feeling? What's going on? Um, and like I said, everyone, you know came up negative and and that kind of stuff but yeah it was it was a whole weird experience to be like on vacation and it gave me a really interesting insight to if you go to an event mm -hmm. and you end up taking ill like how mm -hmm. that really changes your experience right because you know i was like i can't do anything I, i'm technically in quarantine the whole time for the run it exactly happened right when the went run was going to start and end. So I couldn't attend any of the social functions or mm -hmm. be around people or have the meals. I mean, like, you know, it was like, so that's why I was like, why bother? Like, you know. Right. Like I was, when we, so I found out obviously when um, Drew picked us up because Drew picked us up. <laughs> and I didn't to... know that he did what he did. Yeah. So like I had bought a couple of masks. Um because I needed them for at least for me, like until mm -hmm. I got my test and then they, they were very nice. And the nurse gave me some N95s. So I had just regular basic cloth masks, mm -hmm. um, which I think is what really made the difference for me, keeping exposure like to a wow. minimum. Right. And so Drew had offered earlier to go pick up Damon and Jim at the airport to take them to the hotel on Wednesday night when they got in very late. And yeah. I didn't know, that, but it made sense because I knew a mask was missing because I was like, <laughs> I bought a couple of them and I and they were different colors. And I was like, where the hell? Like, and I was like, how did I let know? And then it wasn't until you told me mm -hmm. that he showed up wearing a mask to pick you up. And I was like, oh, that's where that went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I was yeah. already in bed. Like yeah, when he went to went. go pick you up. I was yeah. like. Nope, I'm gonna, you know, put a mask on. I'm gonna, you know, put my CPAP and then I put the mask on and I'm gonna go to bed and take some acetaminophen and we'll see how I feel in the morning. Right. That was guy. Um, yeah. And that's kind of what happened for me. I was like, oh, okay, well, there's that thing. That's the thing now. And um, so knowing that that was when you started, I had my immediate thought was, how is it gonna do to run? And at the, and I kind of was like, well, he probably won't. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you could have you. I mean, maybe emphasis on the maybe. Oh maybe no! Don't where... misunderstand. I could have totally been morally irresponsible, not worn a mask, and done everything. 
I mean, like, yeah, like, that, I could have gone checked in. I could have got a shirt. I could have gone to all the VIP stuff. I could have gone to the play space. I could have fucked around. I had several offers on apps. Like I could have been very busy and quote unquote, very happy, but I chose not to do that. I yeah. legitimately turned down dick and chasers and opportunities and options. I'm not bragging. I'm just stating facts. Thank you, Damon. <laughs> <laughs> But what I was going to say is you could have been somewhat responsible and done some things masked and maybe, but depending on the fatigue, there would have been that part to it as well. And in addition, just kind of like, as I'm kind of spitballing here, we've kind of talked about this forever. um, There was that part, but there's also like, we talked about it in the, in the, on road, there's a lot of walking involved. And I just don't like, that was the other part for me. I was like, Cause I remember when I got COVID, I didn't move. I didn't, I, it was, it was a, it was a pain to move from the bed upstairs to like down here on the couch. Like I got, so, yeah. So I I had a feeling that that pro- that could have been a big factor as well. Cause a lot of the stuff that was for the event was quite a distance away from where the majority of the rooms were. Well, I experienced that. Sunday morning because Chester was doing photographs of the three title winners Mm. outdoors in the morning. And I wanted to say goodbye to him in person. So I had my N95 mask on and I went downstairs. Well, I walked across the two buildings downstairs through. Oh, that's what I did. I went in the lobby. I talked to the front desk because I was switching rooms because I had two different reservations. I, Instead of paying the higher price for the suite, I got a regular room just for one night because I didn't have to fly out till Monday morning. Um, and the hotel was very gracious, and they just kept me in the same room for the reduced price. Thank you very much. Um, that was the one thing I liked that they did. Anyways. Uh, it's a long story. I'll tell it another time about my issues with Hilton. But So anyways, and then I walked – through the lobby they told me how to leave to go to go past the restaurant to get outdoors to walk past the restaurant to get over to the tower to walk past the tower to the other side then to walk past the two sets of of those buildings and the cabanas to then walk into the courtyard which gets me towards the conference center and that is where they were outside and by the time i got there i was like "Ooh, baby it is hot and it is the distance and i am tired Right. Also, didn't help that I was sick. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, right, right, right. So I was like, <laughs> so when we talk about that on the road show, y'all just like, yeah, fourteen acres. It is a huge property. Just saying. Yeah. I'm with that. Yeah, that's that's all I need to say for this month. Uh, let's uh, get on to this. Carrie, <laughs> what's been going on? Wait a minute. Something has changed. Carrie, <laughs> <laughs> what's been going on over in the Twitterverse? So in Twitter, we got a whole bunch of new followers. And I don't know what's going on. I'm looking to David. Uh, cause most likely he's the one that's like caused the, the, the Twitter increases if he's been posting things or retweeting things because like to my knowledge, we're not doing anything, but thank you all for following us. Uh, we would like to thank the following Gordo Barbadon, Vicente 4766-66607, Hib 1, Kurt Spencer 9, Daniel Coover 1, Arco Das 9823756, Olicia Kuma, Bougie Bear 36, Oreo Rules 83, Alex underscore Ilanovskrv, Leather Cassius, Yay Wayno, Jay Eagleton 24, and Chris Ricky Sound. Mm. So thank you all for following us on Twitter. Mr. Damon, I think we got a comment on YouTube this past month. We did. 
um, from COL 633, which was our What's Going On for August 2022. Um, Howard Neong, who, hmm, I don't know who that is, um, said, wait, so Jennifer Walters and Seahawk are the same person? I never would have guessed. Dot, dot, dot. Joking. Yes. Uh-huh. Thank you. I like that. Yes. Jeff? Keep going. What? You just said me. What do I norm? What did I previously do oh, to Gary? Oh, son of a bitch. Anyway, what's going on on Facebook? <laughs> okay, so I have some notes. It's what's been going on over in the Facebooks. So just for previous reference. Okay, okay for reference, we are not doing this again if you're going to give notes. <laughs> Somebody else was the one who switched things around. Because someone requested it. I did not request that. Anyway, Anyways. what's been going on on the Facebooks? I don't yeah. know what the fuck we you just said. New, <laughs> we have three new follower, followers with Comic Book Bears Podcast, Paul Baldwin, and Demon Doctor. Demon Doctor. Mm. I wonder where that's from. Mm. Huh. Anyways, we also got a like from Brian Peters. And the combination of follows and likes from Kyle D Dagnan, Don Allen, Awet, Awet, uh, Ryan William, De Argo Simmons, um, Marwan, Marjan, Marwan, something like that, Guan, Daniel Davida, 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 that's it. Yeah, uh, Aaron Strong, Lee Knott, Leonardo Kempos, Kevin Lee, Mike Blank, Steve Wimberly, Wimberly, Marcus Harris, Grizz Riley, Doug Chase, Joseph McVinny, James Ungaran, Ungaran, Ungaran. Anyways, Pascal Pierre Via Viaville Marcandines. Uh, yeah, the best I could do. I apologize. Uh, Edward Quan, 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 oh, Edward Con Denker. There we go. I can do it. And that's, 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 that's a bit what's been going on in the Facebooks. <clears throat> and uh, I believe there was some Patreon update, Patreon updates as well, Gary. Um, yes, we would like to thank our newest Cubster level patron, Michael K, who just joined us on September 1st last month. Yay. Um, so yeah, and uh, no anniversaries in the past month. So we want to give big bear cub hugs to our patrons, Cubsters, Charles W, Daniel C, and the new uh, Lee joined Michael K, as well as the Uber level patrons, which are Dave T, Lee, Michael Q, and Tim S. Plus our buddy level patrons, which are Lloyd G and Michael V. So hey. thank you all for becoming patrons okay. and supporting us. Uh, quick question. Is Michael K, uh, Michael with an A-E-L, or is it just an E-L? You are correct. That's a typo with the image. I will fix that. I think it's correct on the website because I also updated that today. So yeah, we'll make sure the the the, the card that I'm showing on screen is is, is matching. We apologize. You know, I'll fingers don't always work work well, especially when you're currently a little sick. So we are currently with nine patrons and uh this is getting us closer to the goal uh where we do a patron only episode every other month um so just saying a couple more patrons well if we get it depends on the level if we get i think one uber or one cubster it should put us over i think i have to double check that um or some of the buddies we'll see but pretty soon we'll be at that so you never know. Yeah. Chuck's been a long time patron. How long has he been a patron? Yeah. Why are you going to do this to me? Okay. Well, mainly <laughs> because he asked in chat too. So. Oh, I didn't see that. I I thought you were quizzing me, and I was like, "Why are you doing this to me, Jeffrey?" No, I'm just <laughs> like, like... Oh, 
Yeah, that's a good question. He's been like there for a really long time. So. He's been there since the very beginning, I want to say. I think I mentioned that um, previously. Yeah, because of yes, like... he is He is an original uh, joiner since we launched, uh, which was March of 2018. Four year anniversary. Nice. Whoop, whoop. Thank you, Chuck. Whoop, whoop. We appreciate whoop, whoop. you very, very much. Love, yeah. Yay. So, Gary, uh, talk to us about the uh, episodes that we had the last month. This is why I say it seems like this has been a long time. Yeah, so this month is the month that we've had the least... Probably the least episodes in quite a long time. And by that, I mean live. Mm -hmm. So, we had CAL 663, which is what's going on August of 2022... Which timey wimey for those that you view that did not know, we recorded that before September arrived because of Labor Day weekend. We intentionally took that weekend off. Mm -hmm. Then we came back for episode COL 664. Let's talk about food, which is the 2022 new Fair Foods <laughs> episode mm -hmm. where Damon and I talked about the foods that were at different state fairs. And Jeff, unfortunately, was ill with COVID. <laughs> It was unable to <laughs> help record the podcast. Yeah. And then the intended two-week hiatus of flashbacks, um, COL flashback 265 and 266, which was the tidal wave gay days in Florida parts one and two, which was from eight years ago. Mm. If I remember correctly. Yeah, 2016, um, which is ironic because drew lived in orlando then and he hosted all of us and it was the five of us and we did the parks and so uh yeah we talked about a, a lot of things and so um yeah it was it was it was uh interesting to go back with Drew because it was his old stomping grounds and to go mm -hmm. see some things and he was commenting on how much it changed so yeah uh oh, yeah. while we were there so That's yeah so I'm technically high. this month we've only had in the month of september itself we only recorded one actual episode right <laughs> right two other free hosts <laughs> yeah, so I hadn't hadn't recorded anything besides, uh, uh, you know, post production audio podcast work uh, right. since August. So that's right. Wow, it gets so. I kind of had a month off from the podcast. It was kind of <laughs> nice. Unintentionally, unintentionally. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. And to be fair, I mean, Not that um, it was. I, I hate to say it. And, I, and I'm just going to say this to folks out there, especially here, at least in the U.S., when it comes to COVID, it's kind of bound to happen. Like, we we knew this a year ago in public health. It wasn't if, it was when. So right. uh, that's why I wasn't super upset when my test result was positive. I was honestly just annoyed. <laughs> I think you were annoyed, and then you had the whole, um, like... Because you were you had been around people recently, you had been around a lot of you know a few people for a while. It, you had that feeling too. Yeah, I, I was I was also along the lines of more annoyed. I, I was mad that it was happening, but uh, it, it was more the annoyed mad. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, or, God damn it, God yeah, damn it, right. But um, and I was I was hoping that I would be able to brag about about the oh, I never got COVID, although I wouldn't like like full on brag or anything. Like yeah, that. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and but because of my lifestyle, the the likelihood that I would catch COVID was, is actually relatively low, except for the fact that I work in an office and have to go to the office. And that's really mm -hmm. besides that, and maybe picking up at like the grocery store. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, like or you, shop like that. I think of the. Three of us, uh, you know, you were you had the I think the least likely possibility of catching it because of the life you lead. Um, but I think that kind of switched when you're you went from working from home to now going into the office. Mm -hmm. So that possibility kind of went up a bit. Um, we're we're getting I, ever closer to the point where we're where it would act where we actually show the advantage of working in the office. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I went into. There, there are certain setups which they still hadn't done. <laughs> um, 
that they're like they're I... they're going to be doing now that mm. will be the actual advantage, which is you know wired computers instead of laptops, desktop computers instead of desktops and multi monitors that you don't have to do the whole like attachments for because it's already doing that with the the desktop. So yeah, oh. mm -hmm. yes. Go ahead. Yeah, I I really feel like um when it comes to to COVID, like I probably would have dodged it for quite a while if it, if it hadn't been for the vacation. And I don't mean to say that like in a negative way, like I shouldn't have taken the vacation. Right. I absolutely needed to, but um, yeah. The hard thing about like coming down on when late Wednesday with the diagnosis was I had been in an airport delayed for several hours mm. around lots of people in an airplane in another airport um, and then had been in two theme parks mm -hmm. two days back to back. So I am literally around thousands of people. Now, granted, the the, the theme parks were mostly outdoors, but still, um, you know, you're on rides, you're in enclosed spaces some of the mm -hmm, time, you're mm -hmm, trying to be mm -hmm. in the air conditioning because it is hella hot out. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. yeah, there was there was a lots of different potential yeah. uh, factors when it came to that. Like, right. So, um there was a part of me, and I did put one in my, like I talked about like carrying a mask with me everywhere. I had a mask in my carry-on, not my carry-on, but my backpack. And I did, once we arrived at the airport, I thought about putting the mask on and then doing the masking throughout the trip and all that stuff. And I don't know why, but something in my head said, don't worry about it. And that sounds weird, but just like, you know, you've you've done all that you can, you know, vaccines and what have you. And while it would suck to get it, um, like, like you said, Jeff, Gary, both of you kind of said it was more it would be more of an annoyance than anything else at this point. It's almost kind of bound to happen. But I am going to be happy for um, cause it, I could think I can do it after this coming Wednesday as I look at a calendar. Boo, boo, boo. Um, yeah, after this coming Wednesday, um, I'll be two weeks out of getting my monkeypox vaccine. Oh. So I could now get the booster for COVID. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Well, and that was the thing is I got my meningococcal vi uh, vaccination update two weeks prior to the run. So on the day that I came up positive for COVID is the day that I was two weeks out from that. Mm. But I hadn't had a chance to get monkeypox yet. And that was another thing at the run is they were offering monkeypox mm -hmm. vaccinations. But I was already ill. And I thought, well, I don't want to go get a vaccination. I mean, technically I could have. But, well, they could have denied me, I think, about it yeah. if, they, if they knew. But... The reality is if I'd had any symptoms from the vaccination, I would have never been able to tell the difference. Right. So I was like, okay, so I guess I'll wait. So this Thursday I get my influenza shot for mm. flu season. And then I've got to wait at least two weeks before I can do anything else. Right. And then I'll probably go through the steps of getting my monkey pox. Oh, and I still, and that's the other thing that sucked about getting COVID when I did was right when we went on vacation is when the bivalent new booster came out. Yeah for everyone so had i gotten it like two weeks prior to vacation there's a possibility i might not have gotten it but so mm -hmm. and i did get a pcr test after i came home which of course came back positive um because it's the way the cdc does it for the molecular testing it's kind of a lottery system so i don't know i don't know if i'll be able to get confirmation if they ran it to see what variant it was but mm. most likely it was the the BA5 version, which is the most nice. contagious and all that jazz. So Nice. Yay. So that's all that pleasantness. So with that being said. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's probably time to, to go from talking about COVID in the sleep to this. <laughs> all right. That's enough of that. <laughs> So, uh, mine is a uh, link to a star that you may may know, may oh. or may not know of. 
Mm. Uh, someone who who's frequently on the uh, land of uh, stocky dudes. That's Logan hey. Troy from this predator. And he says, "Think of you as I touch myself." <laughs> and he's Ooh. and since he started with stocky dudes, he's grown a beard. And I have to say, that's that's a nice beard. That is a and and everything else. But wow, I love... might have PBS. Maybe. I don't know what you possibly. Think. Wait, what? Sorry. PBS. Perfect. Perfect beard, beard syndrome. syndrome. Oh God. <laughs> you know where a man grows in a really thick, full beard with almost like no effort. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he kind of has yeah. a little patch on the 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 uh, chin there, but on hmm. that, I mean, too many Christmas. Sorry. That's a. Are you looking at the rest of his stuff? Um, I'm. You're. There's one specific attribute that's um, distracting. Okay. I think we're both. <laughs> the, the, your two co hosts are a little confused. Of the, um, on this picture or some uh, one of the other oh, ones? Oh, no, I'm just scrolling through his feed. Yeah. And... Ah. Say it's quite the mouthful. Oh. Oh. God. Oh, wow. That's, oh, God. Sorry, I had to go look him up on, on Saki Dudes because I, I was like, who is, I know this face, but I don't know this face. And the you, beard you're thinking of, of the, like, the, the non-bearded, the, the yes, pre-beard. I, when you go to look him up on um, uh, Stocky Dudes, and I'll actually just throw a link into, uh, I'm throwing it into the chat, uh, the uh, live chat, and then I'm also going to throw it in here. Also, here's uh, the link to the, the, the tweet from the chat, too. Yeah. But there's that, that's that's what he, he when we first kind of saw him, what he looked like. <laughs> oh, With the baby. The he was a baby. Um, I, I mean, he's still kind of one, except he's grew a beard, so he doesn't look as much of a one. That part. But yeah. And that's what, like, I was like, oh, oh, now I know who you are. Now I recognize. I hadn't seen the beard fully yet. And, wow, and he, he does... looks like such a baby in right? the photo on Stocky Dudes. Right, he's a baby cub. Wow, it's one of those things where they they they've already like set it up and everything. Yeah, it, they take the picture and 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 then they just never change it during this entire thing. But then you go yeah. look at the at the the images of his later work and yeah, he's. I mean, he's got the beard and stuff now. I mean, there's one where he's um, yeah, yeah. But anyway. Where he's like, I think clean shaven, like fully clean shaven, but still, he's he's not, he's um, oh, 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 babe, oh, okay, yeah, I don't think they've updated his age. No, they haven't. I mean, clearly, um, yeah, because I'm sure he's not that age now. Correct. Oh, that is a penis. Um, told you, <laughs> told you. <laughs> Glad you caught up. Oh. I, as, as someone who's a fan of his work, uh, I already knew that. But uh, when you well, say that, I'm like, oh, 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 okay, I get you. Right. Let me yeah, just well, say, it's mouthful. Yeah, it is girthy. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Aren't, aren't, anyway. aren't you glad that I reintroduced you to him? Yes. Thank you. I haven't really looked at a lot of Dr. Dude stuff in a while. It's probably I, I swear to God, he's at least two decades younger than me. He's got to be. Well, so I will say this. The most recent release, this is not a shout out. By the way, Brandon, if you happen to hear this podcast and you want to come on and promote Stocky Dudes, we would be happy oh, to yeah, have you totally. come on and talk to us. But just so you know, Stefano at Scout's debut, the most recent video is hot. Uh, 
I'm just saying, like from what I've seen of it, uh, that that gentleman has like one of the jiggliest asses I've seen in a while. Uh oh. I'm just I'm gonna have to look at that hair in a minute. Anyway. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, but like and if you also hear this, um, we're just going to make a polite request that you update your models' photos to something more contemporary, and you uh, code the website so it shows their current age, <sighs> not the age when they joined. Mm-hmm. Say it. Yeah, mm-hmm. just, just so that we get more more appropriate view. Being like, "Hey, I was expecting a nineteen-year-old, but mm. he he looks a bit older than that." Mm-hmm. I mean, you could definitely like put like age joined stocky dudes and then like current age or something because if they stay on you know yeah i get a a nice age at (laughs) age at joining wow yeah (sighs) anyway there you go you're welcome damon what do you got looks like you got a couple yes i do have a couple um trying to close a couple of things out um so yeah there's the first one which is the sound i call titled the sound of um, and you kind of have to, it's a video, it's by NB underscore Nash underscore. It's a short video, but you get the gist, or the jizz. Oh, I was so just bad. about to say that before you actually <laughs> did it yourself. You get the gist, oh. and I'm just going to say, you mean the jizz? <laughs> yeah, um. yeah. Yeah, that that was that was there. That Look, was the thing I, I I had dogs, so I am Jimmy Christmas, be... right, 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 right. Uh, I would have to say that maybe is sane, but it's not a waste of time. Mm. But that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That man is dangerous. That man. <laughs> that man. That man is dangerous. N and B. N B Nash. Yeah. I'm just yeah. saying, for the record, to totally quote a Christmas story, you'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he, it, he he's it's... he's one who has to be at an angle and be pointing away from him. So can't be <laughs> one of those people who ends up, you know, doing the, the uh, trying to shoot over your head into the headboard or something like that, um, because it might end up, you know, yeah. hitting the eye. And you know what happens yeah. when it comes in the eye burns baby it burns. but um yeah so i wanted to share that one um and it, it's a short enough video that i figured i could share another one and this one is more on a personal note um the next one i have which is it's called i titled it savage Fenty. Fenty. it is um by only on cameron um at only on cameron cameron boylan and it is his pictures from his um um Savage Fenty, Savage Fenty, which is Rihanna's um, uh, fashion brand. And what I've loved about um, her brand is she mm. tends to show pictures of like thicker dudes and thicker and thicker females. Like she, she, she is very on the site. At least there's a lot of you know showing of different bodies and them in these. Um, mm-hmm. things that she has and Mr. Um, um, Cameron here is beautiful just 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 beautiful and um, he's not the first model they've had with this like with the thicker body but when I saw these pictures it 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 it, it, it made me feel good I'll put it like that because mm-hmm. I don't always see this yeah, there's that one. Yeah, the mm-hmm. Yes, there's that part of it. But the, the other side of it is I don't normally see bodies like mine sharing being shown on um a fashion site. And one, one of my favorite things is the quality of the uh shots. Mm-hmm. Because you know, taking pictures of Black people can sometimes be difficult, but they've got the lighting and everything is just perfect. Perfect. Right. And again, he is a he's a beautiful man. Uh, I don't know. I don't. Well, I, it doesn't matter. I don't know if he's family or not. It doesn't matter. Um, but that's 
they they like they're showing curves, they're showing rolls, they're showing you know, I mean, just these pictures have his butt out. It's because it's a jock strap, but um, it, it's just nice to see. And um, yeah, I figured I would share it. And he looks really good in it, and it's a really nice. And I don't know um, the clothing line, but um, I went looking at it, and I think you have to be a VIP to get the the really good prices. But um, I might give it a try, mm. just because I think they 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 do go up. I think to four or five x on certain things. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing in one of the jack straps the one, two, three, four. Or so. Right. And <laughs> this is one of the things about a lot of places is they just don't go up and it's like, well, it's too expensive. And I'm like, yeah, but some people might want your stuff. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And by not having, I, I, well, the more common sizes are these smaller ones. Well, F you. How do you know that you won't like get a lot of money because you offered the Quadruple XL. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Carry <Carrie> is. <laughs> and again, he is he is he is a beautiful man. And it was a it was some great photos. And <sighs> there are some sexy ass men on this fucking website. I'm just saying. Right. right. I've never looked at this website before, but I am paying attention now because there are some beautiful big men on it. And I'm really mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. like I don't know how else to say it, and this isn't meant to be negative. I am shocked. Like, never in my lifetime did I think I would see a fashion site with these size of model men, like mm-hmm. real people. Yeah, and right. I, I also like how each one has, it literally is the, like they say, see other models in different sizes. So you can mm-hmm. actually kind of see somebody in a size that you want i mean you don't have every size but yeah exactly it's like i yeah i uh, i may have been sleeping on this brand for a while and i may i would i spent um i was at lunch but i was it was um i was at work and that's where this kind of idea came around i was at work let me find out if i was actually at work because i may have not been um but I was like, oh, this is really nice. And I started like scrolling through the site. And like you said, like Gary, I was seeing these beautiful people of varying sizes, you know, s- same clothing. And it's not something you get to see every day. So. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying for the Savage X jock strap, if y'all want to follow along and play at home, you go to the Savage X drop strap, you choose black caviar, you choose double extra large, and you look at the model, and this man has a gorgeous ass. I'm just saying. Let, let, let me see that. Okay, so jock straps. Savage X jock strap. Mm-hmm. Comes in four colors. So there's a... What are they? Well, there's two black caviars. I don't know why. One's kind of gold, one's kind of red. I think they need to reconsider their naming. Anyways, it's the one with the red that has the red X. Very discreet, kind of like branding. But this man has big old thighs. The the double X one? Yes. Mm-hmm. But then they get a booty shot. He does have a booty. I, I don't know. I, yeah, they have a button here which says upload your photo. Say so what? On this site, it, it, it has, like, if you scroll in a little bit, like, on that page you were referring to, underneath the description, the details, mm-hmm. it has, has, a, has a link to upload your photo. I'm like, hmm, what does that mean? Huh. I don't huh. see that. Huh. Well, either way, um, yeah, we're getting sidetracked again. I'm fine. Yeah. 
beautiful, beautiful man, beautiful men, beautiful people on this site. Go join. I mean, go look at, go check it out. And, you know, maybe, you know, and, it's, and if you're somebody who's listening is not much into the bigger guys like we we are, you, there's also some very handsome smaller guys. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, I will say their their body types are are varied. Yeah. There's some guys with abs. There's guys without abs. There's guys with moves. There's guys with butts. There are guys with bellies. Like yeah, it's everything and anything. Right. Okay. So nice. Right. Anyway. Anyways. There you Good go. Yeah. On you, Rihanna's marketing team. Yeah, really. Gary, what about you? Um, I forgot what I picked. Uh, <laughs> You're distracted. You're distracted. <laughs> oh, so I have two. Uh, the first one's called Steps to Joy. That's what I called it. Um, step one: find someone who makes you happy. Step two: never let them go. Um, oh. And this is at nineteen moose, the number nine in SIX. Um, it's a couple. I think uh, the one that may be considered the chaser, quote unquote, I think his name may be Zeke. Uh, but they these are really cute couple photos. Yeah. Um, but they're also a little naughty. Or at least one uh, of them is. Uh, the yeah. middle one. But they're just like a really cute like couple. And I love like how happy they are in the photos. Like as a, um, I guess... If I had to say it this way, like a body discordant couple, like what people think of traditionally, usually the the individuals kind of match in body types. But in this case, one is like thicker. You know, he's not a twink, but on the other you know, hand, his partner is a bigger dude. And they're both like very beautiful to look at. And they're, you know, a great looking couple. And if I you this couple, I've seen other of their tweets. I was just going to say it. If you click through to look at their timeline, you will see all sorts of triple uh, X more content. This is about the nicest, cleanest of the bunch. With, with, an, oh, wait, with an OnlyFans I... link. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's like when, when I right went, there. In, went into there, the third one, but I think that was one that was retweeted. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh. And they are both verse. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I'm noticing. For the for the record. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yes. That's nice. That's nice. Yes. Happy happy Saturday morning indeed. <laughs> there, um. <laughs> one of the tweets has a video which it seems like it's from Japan. Yeah. And then naughty bits are pixelated. Yeah. So there, there. Hold on. We're just gonna follow that. Then there we go. That's nice. Oh, oh. Okay. Anyway, um, what? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, I thought it was a cute photo set. Yeah, um, it's adorable. And then this other one, uh, the second one, I just called Black Hole. If you haven't seen this, it cracked my ass up. Like it's from <laughs> Sean, um, also yes. known as at Gay Black Vet, um, who's somebody I've recently started following. It's this is <laughs> this is so stupid. It's a, like an Instagram post. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram. I still have an account. <laughs> and now I broke Damon. <laughs> Mission accomplished collect all the coins oh lord that was that was fun it was funny as i've seen it i I had seen it because i follow him already and still it just makes me laugh because i just it's it's yeah it's cute it yeah it's cute and stupid but funny right and kind of sexy because yeah right that man is sexy right i mean so obviously these men that were you know promoting are all sexy but yeah okay i need you to mute for a second can you mute nope i can't i can't do that okay <clears throat> so yeah all right moving on to links uh i i actually just thought of a link because i realized hey my my uh google doc is currently in dark mode 
And, but I was only able to accomplish that because of a nice little browser extension I found out about called NightEye. Which allows you to basically turn any page into a dark mode. Oh. Okay. And On what browser? A, they have extensions. So the link I have is to their like general page. But they have extensions for iOS, Android, Chrome, Safari, Firefox, Edge, Opera, Vivaldi, uh, Yandex, Brave, UC Browser, COC, COC, or I would probably pronounce it as Cock Cock. And that's what they have listed. Okay. I know a lot of the main browsers have an extension or several extensions to choose from to use for dark mode. This is um, the one I use. Yeah. They, and I, 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 I found I a find page them, which recommended two of them. And this is right. the one I, I find that see. when it comes to a desktop, they're incredibly helpful mm -hmm. as extensions on browsers. Most mobile devices have dark modes as options within the settings, mm -hmm. either of the OS or the app itself. But like, it's, it seems weird to me. It's kind of like a forgotten thing when it comes to desktop. I'm like, hello, like I don't need. Yeah. Like I can, like, play. I think like if you use like Google docs on your phone, uh, which uh, I think I rarely do, but I do on occasion. You can actually turn a dark mode there, but for some reason you can't do it on on uh, on the desktop. Maybe it's easier somehow in on the phone, but and yeah. it, it it's it's on again and off again because uh, I mean, like uh, for Twitter, it just enables the dark mode that Twitter has built in. Um. Well, on other sites, it will basically do a do a, do a fake dark mode, essentially. Yeah. So it's probably not the greatest, but it does. I think it does a decent job for for what it's for. Uh, just I always I've been I would recommend that in the the settings just to have the normal set as a default, and then just turn it on mm -hmm. uh, as you go. Just to kind of make sure nothing, because sometimes it it doesn't work as well, and so it can look weird. And especially if it's like an already dark page, sometimes it's still <laughs> trying to put the dark page into a dark mode when it really doesn't need it because it's already dark. But I'm fan of dark mode. So I just downloaded it and added it to my uh, Chrome. So we'll see how it goes. I may stop it. We'll see. I'm not. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, it's it, I, not I like for everybody, it but hey, it's a recommendation. Yeah. I like dark modes um, because once you start it, you kind of, it kind of becomes weird when you go back to certain things like, um, Again, like Word, we just got for um, our work, they changed, they got um, Microsoft Office was able to do a dark mode. And like that included uh, Microsoft Word. And having a dark mode on that was, is amazing. Cause I look at documents all day and mm -hmm. letters mm -hmm. and such. And having just that little, that moment of darkness is, is good to have on the eyes but yeah 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 yeah. thank you for sharing that that's kind of cool You're welcome this Amazing. is what links are, are for in addition to doing things such as recommending uh movies which gary um so <laughs> it just came out on the 30th if you have disney plus i realize i'm a bit of a disney plus uber fan because it's mostly what i talk about these days but um if you haven't seen it i highly recommend you give hocus pocus 2 a chance I know there's a lot of like back and forth on social media that I'm seeing on people's opinions. In fact, a couple of articles are criticizing it um, because they think it's too late. They're trying too hard. And, you know, there's all this like squabble about the nostalgia factor and how it's not as good as the first one. And other people are like, well, maybe you watched it a million times and you build up this whole like concept in your brain of what it should be when there's a sequel. And it's just, you know, your own misgivings because it's not meeting your expectations, blah, 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 blah. So I decided to watch it sooner than later because I didn't want to like have too much 
online messaging kind of decided for me. Mm. I honestly enjoyed it. I laughed several times. Genuinely, there are some musical numbers in it that I honestly love. I was listening to one of them before the start of the show because it's like an earworm and I couldn't get it out of my head. Um, and all three of the actresses really sing on the soundtrack. So I highly suggest um, y'all go check it out in the month because uh, obviously it's Halloween Ooh, season. Bette, Bette Midler's back. And, Ka- and Kathy Najemi and... Sarah That's Jessica Parker. Great. Yeah. But Sarah Jessica Car- Parker in the first one? Yeah, yeah. That's all three of them. That was that was Sarah Jessica And, Sarah and, and, and I'm super stoked and excited. This isn't really a spoiler. Doug Jones is back. Who is the actor who played um, the uh, boyfriend who in the first movie was brought back from the dead? Billy Butcherson, oh. the kind of zombie. Doug Jones is playing him again. He comes back in this film. Interesting. I think they do right by him. I love Doug Jones. I've really, I've known of him, but I fell in love with him on Star Trek Discovery um, as Saru. And he has a very distinct kind of body, but he's um, highly in demand because he's an amazing physical actor because of his tall. tall, Yes, he's very tall, very thin, very lanky, um, but he does really great work in that kind of arena. So he kind of gets booked for certain things that way. And I was super excited that they brought him back for this because in the original, if you've ever seen it, yes, they literally put live moths in his mouth that fly out in that scene in the movie when he's able to cut the the stitches um sewing his mouth shut um there's a there's been some behind the scenes stuff and he's actually talked about it in interviews and explained how they did it but those were real moss there was no cg i mean mind you this movie was like 30 years ago basically mm-hmm. the original. so i think it's where some people are having some issues that like they're not suspending their their belief kind of stuff and they're like trying to make it work and i'm like and so when i watched it i was like i'm just gonna watch it to be entertained that's how simple it is and i was entertained and i really enjoyed it um sure there are some things they could have done better but there was also a lot of callbacks to the original i watched a video today pointing out all these things i didn't even notice that were done so amazingly well in the new version that call back to certain things in the first one um Hmm. So there's like lots of super little Easter eggs and stuff maybe like that. So I maybe it's one of those things where you need to try watching both of them back to back. Um, uh, have a, a hocus pocus marathon. I will say this. If you're an Uber fan of the first one, I don't know how you're going to feel about the second one. I, I think watching a back to back is fine. Just realize it's going to be really noticeable. The technology has advanced. The quality of the resolution has advanced. <laughs> Everyone's gotten older. Um, <laughs> they've lost weight. Uh, like, you know, so the, the, the ironic thing is if the Sanderson sisters have been gone almost another 30 years, what happened in the 30 years that they were gone, that they didn't technically exist, that they look so different. I mean, that's the only real fallacy about the, 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 the science fiction fantasy, I guess, aspect of it is like, anyways, mm-hmm. so yep. put that all that aside and watch it. So are we, are we, are we, uh, are they, are people marketing for nostalgia? Yes. I think we answered this on a previous show. Oh, absolutely. Show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Without a shadow of a doubt. And, and because there's new musical numbers in this, when Drew and I went to, um, to go back to my vacation thing, we went to Magic Kingdom. We went to Mickey's Not So Scary, which is a special Halloween themed event. We had a, a such a fucking fabulous fun time. I can't tell you. Um, I got a, a shit ton of candy. Um, cause you literally go trick or treating while you walk around the amusement park, you can see lots of characters, lots of different things. It was a lot of fun. And to see the villains spectacular show that the Sanderson sisters are the leads in. It's so much fun. Now there are new songs in this movie. So now there's a part of me that's wondering if at the MK Mickey's not so scary is if they're incorporating these new songs this year, because they didn't when we were there because the movie hadn't been released yet. Oh, but now that it's been released, I want to see the Sanderson sisters do the new songs and the old songs. So we'll see. If they don't do it, if they don't incorporate it this year, then absolutely they have to start incorporating it next year. It was so much fun to watch. Anyways. Right. Uh, and then just to wrap up, uh, I have already started watching Star Wars Andor, the new series um, on Disney Plus from Star Wars, where um, – uh, 
I've completely forgot the character's name. Uh, is it Andor? Cassian Andor? Yes, Cassian Andor. I know that was... because when you look, hover over it, it gives a description. It says, in a dangerous era, Cassian Andor embarks on a path destined to turn, turn him into a rebel hero. Well, you find out how he gets his name. There's some backstory stuff. The first four uh, episodes of the season are out. I think it's 12 or 16 for this season, and there's going to be two seasons. Um, uh, of course, some of the grumbling right now is that it's pretty slow. Well, that's expected. It's a longer season, and there's already mm-hmm. multiple seasons booked to be like taken care of. So like, they're going to get a lot of character development, so you're not going to see a lot of super action. Um, I don't – like, you know, I'm not completely over the moon for it, but I don't hate it. It's – so interesting like what they're showing about this period of time that we kind of don't know but it's also it's it's definitively being uh promoted and it was built as a spy thriller so the concept is about like who knows what and the backstabbing and the stuff that's going on behind the scenes and a lot of like that kind of stuff it's very interesting so i i recommend people check it out side note to to add on to previous link recommendations because i'm pretty sure these were recommended before <clears throat> i i don't remember when it was but i did catch up on uh star trek discovery and picard and i wholeheartedly recommend those so good i'm, I'm glad that you've liked them they uh oh i didn't put it on here i probably could um star trek lower decks is back with a new season season three i think it is on um paramount plus uh which is their adult swim question mark <laughs> like version of star trek it's it's uh, animated and it's inappropriate and i love it yeah it's supposed <laughs> to be more comedic uh well this past week's episode was a crossover with ds9 that was fun nice um and apparently in the new season of star trek strange new worlds there will be a crossover between lower decks and strange new worlds and everyone is i know i'm watching david's like raised eyebrow right so if you have an edit so there everybody's like wait is this going to be a a who frayed roger rabbit thing where like the animated characters are in the real world nobody knows they're being super tight-lipped about it of course because everyone's now speculating and wants to know how they're going to bring these two different i'm assuming they're either going to have the actors or some an actor as the character from the show in it i would bet uh but it would be kind of cool to who frame roger rabbit it I'm. Mm. By the way, Who Framed Roger Rabbit was not the first movie to ever do the animated animation combined with live action. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One one example is uh, Mary Poppins. <laughs> true. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think there was another one which uh, is not available anywhere right now. Which I uh, Song of the South. Of. Yep. Mm-hmm. yeah um so uh yeah i would mm-hmm. um i'm curious to see <laughs> that's what's why gonna i didn't happen say it. with that <laughs> but like i believe no, in, like these things need to be spoken into existence i think Whoopi goldberg has been a proponent of saying disney mm-hmm. should release it but disney should put a caveat like a whole disclaimer like in front a disclaimer of it and talk front, about yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, about the Agreed. whole historical context and the importance of understanding that kind of stuff. And I'm and I'm supportive of that. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, historical but I think record should be, done, should be I think this should be done with a lot of films. Like I yeah. think this should be put before Gone with the Wind. Um yeah. you know, they should yeah. just be able to put things in context and help folks understand. You know, this is from a time in our past that we're not proud of as a human species. Well, some of us are not proud of it. <laughs> um <laughs> and you know there are things that we've learned since then hence you know we're putting this little disclaimer up uh, yeah there was a, a point in time i remember where the warner brothers cartoons um w- would air and they would have a lot of these like certain ones in particular would have this like disclaimer before they would air it like to kind of give you because of the time that the cartoon was made right right gave you a little bit more like a i don't want to call it a warning but more of a like we said like you said gary like a context 
this was made at a time when blah 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 etc cetera, etc cetera. anyway right. agreed with that being said yeah uh yeah with that being said i think that's the end after this long long episode well we've had a while we needed to catch up <laughs> yeah it, it's been a while since the three of us got together so right catch up. actually the Bye. last time was when we did this show before yeah last the last time we were together was for a what's going on episode which was recorded back in august even though mm-hmm. we released it in september back in august but besides the point in any case i need to get appropriate things here it's been a while okay <clears throat> so there's plenty of ways to contact us if you have any questions what? comments concerns uh how, <laughs> how was your stint having covid i don't know uh you can uh, uh send you can make a comment on our blog at comes out if you want links to any of the stuff that we showed here we don't show it live because of you know tos um, but uh, you can find the links to all these tweets and um, links. Uh, and I will also have um, links to the uh, b- 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 trailers for these movies that we talked about. We do that at CubsOutLoud.com. You can also shoot us an email if you want to contact us. Uh, it's CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. If you would like to speak to us directly, you can also do that in our entourage chat at on Telegram at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. If you would like to see when we're planning on recording these shows, you can find out on our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Keyword here, planning, doesn't necessarily mean exactly when we're going to, but that's beside the point. If you would like to get some of our accoutrements, such as the Consent is My Foreplay shirt, which is basically what all three of us are wearing in different styles, I've got a uh, uh, light uh, uh pride uh, one i've got we got a bear one uh, that demon's wearing and gary's wearing a dark pride one we can also get mugs and other other various things at our zazzle store at zazzle.com slash comes out loud some of the designs that we have on there are designed by smashy we can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash smashy uh user slash smashy the bear you can also become a patron like our our lovely patrons that we thank so much for their support at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Or if you just want to send us a donation, you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, and Spotify. Rate us, review us. The more you rate us, the more that it gets into the algorithm and more people might be able to find us and listen to us. You can find me anywhere in the internet as box at box puppy box cub box up to your other or Windgem, that's W-Y-N-D-G-E-M on Twitch, where we stream Bears and Dragons every other Thursday. Damon. Sorry. I had a video that suddenly popped up on my screen and needed it to stop. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cub 79 that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9, on most bear-related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. Um, the Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Gary? If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody! Good night, everybody! Have a good one, y'all! Bye!